Streamlining new family registrations at check-in is a great use for forms, as it ensures that all required info is collected. Digital forms also removes old paper-based processes that lead to lost permission forms or new families not being followed up. Many churches also deal with GDPR and other country-specific privacy requirements these days. As a religious organisation, collection of personal data is classified as sensitive, requiring special protections under GDPR. By moving to digital forms, you can secure access to sensitive personal info and gain a central place to manage data corrections and removal. To get started, click the new button at the top and then Form. I want to keep all kids ministry forms together, so I'll use kids as the type. I'll first add a person question and label it primary contact. This is normally the father or mother. Make the mobile phone required as it will be needed if you need to contact a parent for any reason. Images are also good to collect as they are displayed in the check-in kiosk, allowing the kids team to visually verify parents. If gender is to be collected, we can still allow people to select unspecified if they don't want to provide an answer. Address is also useful, but isn't required. The Profile Linking field tells UCARE what to do if there isn't an existing profile. I want a profile created if an existing one isn't found. We will require at least one parent or guardian, so make this a required question. I want our kids team to call new families and help them get connected, so I'm also going to link this person to the new family process that I created. The process will assign the primary contact to a team member and the process will help track the integration of new families. We also want to collect the details for the spouse, so add a related person question. Name the question spouse and make the mobile required in case we need to contact a parent. Related person questions need to have a relationship to the primary person. I'll enter married and partner these options will display as a drop-down under the other related person fields. There may not be a spouse for a number of reasons, so don't make this a required question. I'm going to also add a paragraph text question so that new families can enter other important notes. The follow-up person can action this. I want a clear divider between these questions and the children questions, so I'll now add a section header and enter children as the section heading. If I need to provide more info to parents, I can enter it in the description. Add another related person question and this time name it child. A child is not likely to have their own phone or email, so we can hide this. For security purposes, we will be collecting a photo of each child, so make this required. When filling the form on a phone or tablet, Tapping the person icon will open the camera to take the child's photo. We need to know the child's age and gender, so make those options required. For this related person question, I'll enter child, grandchild and friend. Grandchild if a grandparent is the primary contact, or friend if the child is a friend of the primary contact's children. You may also add family if aunts or siblings commonly bring children. The child question is required, but the more interesting option is allow this person and linked questions to be duplicated. When enabled, a button is added under the child question. When clicked, another child question will be added, along with any questions that are linked. We'll look at linking in a moment, but by enabling this option, it means that we can add as many children as needed to a family. While we know the age of the child, we want to explicitly collect age group. Sometimes a child will go into the same group as a sibling, even if they're not exactly the correct age. For instance, if they have a learning difficulty. You may alternatively call this question school grade. The next interesting option is save to. I'll link age group to the child question. When I do, more options appear. I want to add children to the correct group based on the selected age group. To do this, I'll add an automation for each option. I'll then select the corresponding age group. 
We now need to ask for permission to use photos of a child. I'll add a checkboxes question for this, with the options no and yes. No is first, as we want that as the default, so that permission is explicit. Again, link this question to the child question. By default, the question title will be added as a detail on the child's profile. We've used a long title and want something a little shorter on profiles. I'll enter Photo Consent. We may need to collect allergies or other special needs, so it's printed on name tags. For this, I'll add a text question and link it to the child question. The Save To field, used on the last three questions, links them to the child question. So if a parent adds another child when completing the form, then a copy of the three linked questions will also be added. Like with the previous question, I'll change the more detailed name. We will finally need permission from parents for their children to participate and a waiver for the church. I'll add another section heading and paste in our waiver. Then I'll add a signature question. If a phone or tablet is used for responses, then this question allows parents to sign with their finger or a stylus. By using the signature option, we can digitally store permission and do away with the need for paper forms. Storing permission in uCare means everything is in one place, allowing quick lookup. You could enable the reload option on linked questions. By doing this, we can get parents to complete the form each year, and when they select a child, the reload option will pull existing info from each person's profile, making forms much faster to complete. Save the form and then try filling it in. When you do, you'll see that primary contacts are added to the process and children are added to the correct groups.